Jeremy Sava, welcome to Nature of Reality Radio. You are the co-director and co-founder of Beard Fest, a creativity festival in the great outdoors of New Jersey that I got to experience myself back in 2017 and would love to experience again. I tried to experience again, um, but unfortunately plans got shut down because of the pandemic that I should not name. And uh, it was a experience that I will not forget, got more in touch with nature, more in touch with my uh, spiritual self and uh, got a lot of, uh, got a few friends there that I still have um, speak to on Facebook now to, to this day. Um, the yoga was amazing. The nature was amazing. The um, music and everything was amazing. Um, so there's definitely a lot of uh, spiritual benefits to going to festivals like that. And maybe you can get into that and hopefully this interview will encourage people to go to some of these um, events like Beer Fest to uh, become more aware of who they are and tap into their creativity. Um, just a couple uh, disclaimers for my listeners, um, folks. Uh, I, uh, of course, as probably many of you know right now, this show is uh, partially pay per view. The last um, 20, 25 percent of the show, uh, well, actually, no, more like uh, 35, 40 percent of the show, I should say, will uh, be uh, pay per view. Uh, I would like to ask people to generously. Uh, pay me on Patreon to be able to listen to the very end of all my shows right now. Sorry if I've been a little too upset over the fact that I haven't gotten a lot of support with that. But I hope that, um, from the goodness of my heart, that people will be willing to listen to that to hear the great things and important things that I do intend to discuss in this interview. Because very often many of the important things are discussed at the end of these um, these interviews. And uh, it's certainly worthwhile to... Uh, um, to pay to listen to it and a lot of radio show hosts don't be shy to pay for your uh ask people to pay for your programs so uh also cost.tv is another place that i upload my videos uh, interviews excuse me after i upload them to youtube i also upload them cost.tv the uh, the um short version that's not um pay-per-view the part uh, please listen to Costa.tv instead of YouTube. We'll listen to YouTube for 15 seconds to give me a view credit, please, folks, and then listen to Costa.tv because that's a blockchain monetization channel. I can monetize there. So I've been with long enough. Jeremy Savo, uh, great to have you on. Why don't you tell us um, your life story from a primary source perspective regarding who you are and what you experienced that causes you to do the stuff that you do and also what the story of Beardfest and uh, how it got created and um, what it seeks to do for people and um, – well, you can make a sales pitch for it now and buy another sales pitch at the end of this presentation, at the end of this interview, um, by all means. Um, and uh, hopefully it'll, it'll encourage people to um, show up to it. So uh, you got the floor. I will put myself on mute. I don't have Alex Jones-itis. I do not interrupt my guests. So you can um, talk as, uh, as long as you need in this little intro here. You got the floor. All right. Thanks. Hi, uh, yeah. Well, hi, Andrew. And, and hi to your audience. Thanks for having me. My name is Jeremy Savo, um, and yeah, as you've mentioned, I co-founded and co-direct an event called Beard Fest, um, which I've been doing for the last nine years. Um, and besides that, I also am a musician. I play in several bands, um, and I also teach music. Um, and I teach I teach a bunch of students every single week. Um, and so, uh, so you asked for me to, to sort of give my bio and, and background. Um, so I started playing music when I was 12. I picked up, I picked up the guitar in, uh, in middle school, actually. We had, in our middle school music class, we had a little guitar program. Um, so, you know, so shout out to Mr. Murtha, who was my middle school music teacher. Um, in seventh grade, the, you know, once a week we would go and play guitar. Um, for an hour or 45 minutes, whatever it was. And I just instantly was hooked on it. And, uh, and I've kind of never looked back, uh, kind of, kind of changed my whole life. I think when I found that and, um, and, you know, uh, I, I went and, and got lessons and I went to a place called the school of rock, um, which was an after school program, uh, which I went to all throughout high school. And while I was at the School of Rock, I met uh, an amazing community of musicians that I'm still in touch with today, um, many of who are in my band and who 
co-founded Beardfest with me and still run it together to this day and still play in bands together to this day. Um, so the School of Rock gave me a really, a really great foundation. Um, and yeah, pretty much after, after high school, uh, my band out of the beard space, we, so, so our band was formed, um, somewhere like right, right around, right after I finished high school, I would say. And, um, we, we used to always throw these parties, um, in our guitarist, uh, uh well, I'm, I'm a guitarist, the, the other guitarist, Zach. Lepresti. We used to always throw these parties in his backyard all throughout high school. Um, whenever his parents would go away, we would throw these parties in his parents' backyard, which was uh, like, I don't know, two acres, and there were some woods and some open space and a, and a pool and a hot tub. Um, and we would just uh, call up a bunch of friends, and our band would play, and we might have a friend's band play, and we would have these parties. Um, and these parties would get a great turnout. Um, and we, we just noticed all the way back then that if you could combine a good environment, uh, a good outdoor environment, a uh, friendly vibe and good production and good music, that that was a whole animal of its own beyond just booking your band to play at a bar. Um, it was kind of like, like, you know, three times as many people would, would show up to these backyard shows than would show up if we played at a bar. Um, and that's because it, it was it was about the music, but it was also about more than the music. It was about it was about everything: the presentation, the vibe, the outdoors, the campfire, um, the camaraderie. And so we were doing these parties all throughout high school. Right after high school, you know, in high school we had all these different bands associated with the School of Rock. Um, and eventually that all crystallized into out of the beard space. Right after I finished high school, um, and we're all slightly different ages, so. But for me, it was right after I finished high school. Um, and the whole band moved into a house together. Um, we got our own house. We were all like 17, 18, 19, six of us living in a, in a suburban house. Um, so it was madness, as you can imagine. Um, but it was also a great learning experience. Um, at that house, we had a huge garden in our, back, uh, our backyard. We did all sorts of fun little projects, we cooked meals together, and we wrote music together, and booked shows, um, and we got really into, we got really into gardening, and trying to grow our own food at that time, so much so that, um, you know, I, I had traveled, and, um, and studied about a thing called permaculture, which is, uh, a, a, it stands, it stands for permanent agriculture, it's, it's a form of sustainable agriculture, and holistic living, basically, I traveled, to Costa Rica to learn about that um, while the band was living together. And when I came back, uh, we were all sort of ready to try to make a move to a place where we could live off the land a little bit. Um, and I was given a connection while I was in Costa Rica to a farm in Virginia with 300 acres that would be willing to allow us to just come live there in our tents and farm on the land. Um, even though we didn't really know what we were doing, we didn't have any equipment or any experience, um, the owner of this land was cool enough to just be like, sure, come, you know, she charged us the cheapest rent imaginable just to be there and, um, and kind of let us do whatever we want. Um, so we were planning this move to Virginia and we decided to throw ourselves a going away party in Zach's backyard, the same place where we used to have all those parties. Um, and we decided that we would throw a bigger version of the parties we used to do and we would do it you know the high school parties were sort of secretive when the parents would go out of town but this one we got the parents involved and you know we told them we, we would like to do this are you okay with that and they said sure and they actually um you know they actually got on board and were supportive about it and, and even helped us with it um and so we basically called up all of our friends from the School of Rock and we booked something like 10 or 15 bands to play in Zach's backyard over the course of one day. Um, we brought in a nicer sound system than we usually had had before and we painted a big beautiful sign that said uh, Beard Fest, which is what we called it. So it was just our, it was our going away party for us moving to this farm. Um, yeah, so we just booked a bunch of bands. I think we may have had a food truck. 
um, that year, like one food truck. Um, and it was pretty informal. It was probably like 15 bucks or even 10 bucks to enter. Um, there was probably like 100 tickets sold, maybe, around that. And we said people can camp if they want. Um, but I think prob for the most part, I think the only people that camped were like the members of our band. So like I remember I camped out, but I don't think very many of our guests actually camped out at that, at that first Beard Fest. Um, so we had a really fun time and the audience had a really fun time. They were, you know, the audience was mostly our friends. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was the first Beard Fest. Then we went and lived in Virginia for a season for about six months and, and lived in our tents and farmed on this land. Um, and eventually we sort of, we, we enjoyed that experience, but we decided to move back to our home area after that. And we sort of wanted to go a little deeper into the music world. Um, upon returning from that trip and a few of us were like, you know, we want to do this beard fest thing again um, But we want to do it Bigger and we want to do it better and we want to do it longer and we want to Really like, you know, bring in some bands that we don't even know just bands that we've heard of But that we don't know personally and we want to have an art team and we want to offer workshops so we can share some of the stuff we've learned in our travels and, you know, some of our visions for just building better communities and living better lives, you know, things like yoga, things like gardening, things like, uh, you know, building, natural building. Um, and so we threw this festival the second year, and this time we had it for two days and two nights with camping. We were very much more organized about it. We had a hand, I think we had a handful of vendors. Um, we had, we brought in this band called Consider the Source to Headline, who we did not know personally. We just reached out to them and we said, hey, what, what would it take to make this happen? And we wound up making it happen. Um, and, you know, we brought in some other very notable artists. We brought in a band called Thank You Scientist and we brought in uh, a, a DJ called AU5, who was actually a friend of ours, um, and we had like 300 people come out and buy tickets to that, and uh, it was great. It, it was like, it felt like a real event, like there was people in the audience who we did not know. That's that's always how you know you're doing a good job as a promoter. There was, um, there was strangers out there having a good time, and we got a lot of great pictures, and the, there was a lot of buzz, and the word got spread around, and when it came to the next year, we decided we wanted to expand it even more. And, and basically, there was no more room to grow in the backyard, so we moved to a campground. And from there, it's grown into what it is now. And so that is, um, that's a, a quick overview of how I got into music and how that got these parties going that were these like little party slash concerts. And that turned organically over many years into what Beard Fest is now. So uh, yeah, with that, I'll, I'll pass back to you and, and see, see if you have any follow-up questions um, based on that. Yes, uh, when I went to Beard Fest, the thing that I was more interested in was probably the, the presentations and the learning experience. Being a radio show, I try to keep up to date on as many things that I can learn about as possible. But of, I, in the end, I still couldn't resist but get involved with some of the um, the musical aspects of everything. And the um, yoga was certainly um, a wonderful experience. Um, now, when um, the, the popularity of this event, um, do you credit the, um, like, <laughs> your guardian angels and spirit guides and all with... Uh, helping this event become much more and, and more and more popular. Um, and you think they were, they were wanted to make sure that they were with you and all to make this event become more and more popular every single year, because um, it has grown, my understanding has. And um, you have every, uh, have you gotten any signs from your angels and guides um, of sorts to any advice on how to keep, um, keep up the good work and all, and that they've been with you through this, um, through this whole thing, I have to think that they would um they would be with you with all the stuff that went on at that at that event. Well, I the 
those aren't uh, like uh, those aren't terms that I actively use or, or concepts that I actively use like um, spirit guides and, and guardian angels but I could uh, could could you maybe put that into um, so could, could you explain what you mean by that and then I, I think I'm sure that whatever you mean uh, I will be able to relate to in some way um, but yeah could you well well, it, it's certain people that uh, do certain things. Uh, they don't know it, but they have a lot of spiritual backing assisting them in, in regards to the things that they're doing. And uh, their endeavors and their missions end up becoming much greater than they could have ever imagined. Um, uh, they think there had to be some grace of God of sorts that helped make this possible. And I would have to think that um, you had a lot of spiritual backing with this, even though you say you're not really familiar with those terms too much. Um, everybody's got angels and guides, even if you don't uh, want to believe them. They're there for you, and they're there to help you and make things happen for you. And there's uh, signs out there that, that they're with you, like um, a feather falling from the sky, like your angel is there, or... You look at the clock off and you see like the, the numbers 11, 11 or 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, like that, or repeating numbers in, in such a way. As you were creating this, um, this Beard Fest and making it better and better every year, did more and more um, spiritual like things happen to you or were you not really paying attention to that? To, um, to to know if that there was any spiritual assistance, like your angels were with you or anything like that during the um, time that you were creating this. Because I um, something like, uh, I think you would have had to have had a lot of spiritual backing. To, not that you couldn't have done it your, on your own with your friends and all that. But um, if, if God wanted something to be really popular, they would he would certainly send his angels to help... Uh, help the humans even if um they don't know that they're there <laughs> so sure there, there's a uh, i guess there's a number of ways a, a number of directions i could go with my answer to this question but um i'll take it i'll, I'll treat it i'll treat it sort of metaphorically and and say i mean for sure that there's so much of it that's beyond my control as an individual, there's so much of it that's beyond our control, even, you know, as all, all the people that are involved in, in organizing it. Um, I definitely find myself thinking, you know, like, uh, I, I find myself at the head of this thing, and, but, but what this thing is, is far beyond, you know, like, like, it's, it's, I understand what it is to some extent, but to, there, there's there's this, it's a phenomenon out in the world. It, it's far beyond me. Um, and, and, you know, I, and I think to myself, like, like if, if people come, to, if people come to me, like asking for advice about how to start an event like this, um, which happens somewhat regularly, and there's always plenty of, of advice I could give, but there's also a, a sense of like, I don't know how much I am responsible for this being being successful in the way that it's been. Uh, th there, there was certainly many forces outside of my control and outside of our control as a team that that factor in. And, and I think there was, yeah, there there was good fortune involved. You could even you could even call it fate with some of the some of the ups and downs we've had. Some of the times that we've come very very close to falling apart and yet pulled through um it very easily could have not happened um there, there's several times we very easily the whole thing could have just fallen apart and that would have been it um but for whatever reason it didn't and um you know maybe that's what you're referring to um as the the input of my guardian angels or our our guardian angels or spirit guides or whatever you might want to call it. Thank you. And um, on the flip side to that, uh, the guardian angels, the spirit guides, the good entities, there are malevolent entities that often try to sabotage uh, things. And um, well, uh, seeing what some people were doing at uh, 
beard fest. Um, I uh, uh, hate to sound like a rat and all, but I mean, if you're the, uh, I'm not going to rat anybody in particular, but you uh, being the head of this, you have a right to know that these things were going on. And um, there's some people that set up uh, conferences and events that have very strict policies about this because they fear that if they don't have a policy about this, then the negative energies and entities out there can sabotage their their conference. And um, what I'm talking about is like um, pot smokers and drug users and people that were drinking maybe a little too much than they should have at, um, at Beard Fest. And because uh, when you uh, do those things, you kind of open up your aura and your spiritual field to the um, entities, the malevolent entities, which can, uh, can sabotage it a little bit more. And uh, for that reason, some people have very strict... Uh, no controlled substances policies. Tobacco is fine. Tobacco uh, actually works like sage and actually clears out. Tobacco smoke does, believe it or not, clears out negative entities, which uh, makes you wonder if that all that stuff about secondhand smoke being harmful is actually a lie to conceal the fact that secondhand smoke is actually good for us because it clears out all the negative entities. But um, people that were uh, smoking pot and doing... Uh, other drugs and um, and drinking a little too much uh, for their own good were probably inviting some negative entities into the conference to sabotage um, to sabotage it. That's not to say that the good entities could have some role in um in uh, stopping them. And I have some experience with that. I was picking up litter at Beard Fest. That's one thing I like to do just to help Mother Earth and humanity in general. It's uh, just be a good man, pick up litter. And a lady who was um, in her trailer um, saw me doing that. And uh, she uh, said, honey, I love people who pick up litter like you and do things to the earth. I want to reward you for that. Come here. I want to let you snort a nice fat line of cocaine. <laughs> and before that <laughs> happened, um, I, next thing I knew, well, right after that happened, the next thing I knew, I heard a voice in the back of my head saying, Andrew, don't do it. Just say no to the cocaine. Don't do it. And it's sounded similar to this girl I knew who died of heroin overdose back in 2015 and uh, in a psychic session I had where she was channeled um, she uh, told me please don't end up like me don't you do drugs um, and I had a feeling she was there with me to try to tell me not to do it and I told the lady uh, thank you for the nice offering but I have to turn down and say no to the coke um, thank you very much but no thanks and um, at that point I did actually send a blessing to that lady and as well as the coke as she was about to start um, to ask um, that only the highest good come from that coke and that it don't sabotage her or do any negative things to her and well maybe there was some magic there because um, about half an hour later when she would have been on the peak of her cocaine rush she actually found me again and she said honey can you please give me a hug I want to hug you because I felt like I was in, invading on you a little bit too much there by asking you to do the coke <laughs> and I gave her the hug then and um, but even before that happened um, I uh, asked uh, uh, Mary that girl who had, I knew died of heroin overdose did um, if you were there and you were telling me not to do the coke could you maybe give me a sign or something and next thing I knew this bird like like flew out in front of me like really close to my shoulder and made a big swooping J motion up um, toward the air and I'm thinking hmm, maybe that was the that was Mary saying she was there with me. So um, interesting experience and all, but uh, I, I've got to bring this to your attention. And um, it, it's not like I want you to call the DEA and cause people to get arrested um, at, at Beard Fest because that's like ruining their lives and all that. It's really uncool. But to see that people are doing things like that at events like this and um, possibly sabotaging the event by bringing negative energies and entities into the event, do you have anything to say about that going on? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, uh, first of all, I think uh, I just want to make sure that I clarify that um, I I run the event with uh, I have business partners um, in it, Zach Lepresti and Sam Gutman. So it's not just me, and then we have a huge team around us. Um, so I just want to say that it's, uh, it's not not just me. But um, uh, yeah, the second thing I want to say is thank you for picking up trash. That's huge when people do that. Really, really helpful. Um, you know, obviously, we always do a huge cleanup effort at the end, um, but the more people clean up after themselves, it's like, yeah, it, that's that's an awesome thing to do. Um, as far as the drug usage is concerned, I would say 
I mean, well, I'm, cer I'm certainly myself. I'm completely comfortable with people smoking marijuana. That that's something I'm completely okay with. Um, and uh, as far as other substances go, um, I think that moderation is key. Um, uh, we're not we're not an event that ha that has strict policies um, around these things, but of course we we don't like to see anyone intoxicated in a way that is dangerous for themselves or others. Um, and I, I I would say that you know I think you can enjoy the event better if you don't do that because um, there is so much there's so much that you can learn by attending workshops and there's there's so many great connections you can make that would be you know inhibited by you taking too much drugs and passing out on the floor um or worse causing you know causing your friends to have to worry about you or take care of you um so yeah i i, I would say um but yeah we're, we're certainly aware that that people use drugs and and something that's interesting i think about beard fest is that we're very it, it's it's definitely a come as you are type of event. We're not trying to necessarily turn anyone away because they're not the right vibe. We, we, we basically, we want to, we want to attract good people with our offerings. Um, you know, and, and we, but we don't want to say, oh, if you're into this, you're not allowed to come. Um, obviously there are certain things that you just can't do. Um, but, uh, but basically, what I would say is, for some people, Beard Fest is a chance to see their favorite bands perform. For some people, Beard Fest is a chance to hang out in the woods for a few days. Um, for some people, Beard Fest is an opportunity to take a bunch of great workshops. Um, for some, it's a reunion with their friends. Um, and for some, it's a party. And, you know, and it's all it is and it is meant to be all of those things um and you know for each individual it will tilt stronger in one direction or another and i think you know like we want to see people excited and we want to see people celebrating life so like in that sense we want to see people partying but we don't want to see anyone partying irresponsibly um in a way that is going to harm them or harm anyone else. So that that's kind of my my thought on that. Right. Um, now, when I went to Fear Fest in 2017, it was generally, the, the weather was nice, and the one times, where, the times where it was raining was at night when everybody was, um, was asleep. But um, are you, um, do you, uh, are you a fan of holding festivals in the rain, the rain or shine? I mean, sometimes uh, having, Festivals in the rain is a um, is a good thing for the sake of um, the rain purifying you. It is um, very true at a spirit from a spiritual sense that having um, uh, walking through rainstorms um, is um, emotionally uh, cleansing, spiritually cleansing, physically cleansing, and um, great for the uh, the body. So, uh, do you uh, like hate to see it if people? Uh, run for cover when it starts raining or um, I, would you actually prefer everybody just um, learn to love the rain and uh, keep the party going huh. whenever you see rainstorms happening at these outdoor events um i prefer to see people doing whatever they want when it when it rains uh like i said as long as people aren't hurting themselves or others uh, i think they should do whatever they want if they want to stay dry they can stay dry if they want to run and dance in the rain that is awesome to see i mean that, that it really is awesome to see because it is like you know it's a very liberated experience right like our our sort of natural instinct is to want to shelter from it um but if we can kind of yeah if we can kind of break through that and and enjoy it that's a wonderful thing so i do love to see it but you know i'm not trying to you know tell people what they should do that that i think you'll you'll find that about my my approach to beard fest in general like i am not trying to tell people how to be or what to do i'm just trying to provide an amazing environment for them to learn and connect with other people and with nature and with music and and lessons um but yeah like i i, I 
I am not one who's going to say, you should be dancing in the rain because that's better for you. Like, you can decide what's better for you as far as I'm concerned. Right, right. Um, now, the music aspect of it, um, there are some, uh, well, forms of music that, uh, I mean, it's, uh, I had a music professor in college once who um, was very strict about saying, uh, make sure you people understand there's no such thing as bad music. Um, it's just not my style of music. Um, however, um, I have heard in some of my past interviews that I've done with people that certain types of um, music can be uh, detrimental in regards to bringing in the negative entities and energies in the same way that um, certain uh, hard drugs uh, like uh, cocaine and heroin and even uh, cannabis, unfortunately, can uh, bring in negative entities. The um, the music can as well, and um, apparently uh, certain forms of heavy metal, death metal, and thrash metal may actually um, do that. Uh, that kind of took me aback because I was a bit of a metalhead um, for um, some of my uh, latter high school, early college um, life, and I uh, went to several Ozfests, and I... Um, never in my wildest dreams was I thinking that this music was um, allowing negative entities to to sabotage me or <laughs> harm me in, in some way. Um, but, uh, I mean, I, like on the, on the other same, same note, I remember my football coach, he would let us listen to a lot of music um, in high school football, the locker room, but uh, he made it clear no profanity-laced lyrics. Um, maybe not just because it's uh, not appropriate for school and all that, but also because... Uh, well, sends a bad message, and maybe it does uh, kind of bring negative entities in in some, in some way. So when it comes to um, the tone, the language, and the style of the music that you offer, um, what do you like to hear more so than other genres? And can you go along um, with that idea that certain styles of music will bring the um, the demons in? Um, can I can I ask you a question? Uh, yes. Um, wh where, uh, so, so would you say that, so you said that you heard from someone that heavy metal can bring in the, these dark energies. And I'm wondering, like, is that a, is that a belief that you now hold that, that that is true? I can't really say whether I do or don't believe that because I, because uh, from an experience standpoint, I never really saw anything. Or experienced anything that led me to believe that I was being sabotaged in some way when I listened to that at the um, at the concerts and events that I had gone to, where that genre of music was was prominent. So um, I um, so I was like, "Where are you?" I haven't even asked them, "Where are you making that um, that assertion?" And um, just kind of drawing a blank on. <laughs> I don't remember. I remember a lot of things. But I don't remember everything everybody tells me and. Uh, so personally, I don't, um, I can't say that I've seen enough to believe that it's real, but I'm not going to dismiss it as being false, simply because I know that there are things that can bring in the negative entities, like I told you about how the, the certain drugs can bring in the negative entities, and there's certain uh, substances like tobacco that can clear them out. So I right, think so the same is true with music. Um, certain types of styles of music can also get rid of the negative entities as much as they can bring them in. So, uh, so yeah, I wanted to I wanted to ask you about that too, actually, which was um, you had said that tobacco clears negative entities and that marijuana brings it in, and that secondhand smoke actually might be good for you because of its spiritual properties. And I'm wondering just where where that where that idea comes from and and how you came to believe that. Well. Lots of, uh, it's been something that's been passed down from generation to generation among, uh, Native Americans anyway, the, uh, the thing about the, the, the tobacco and, um, again, the people that, uh, that, uh, that have been to some conferences like James Gilliland who runs the East City Conference in Washington State, very strict, um, no, uh, controlled substances policy, um, and it's based on the grounds that, um, anybody, that people that do it will bring in the, the the negative entities so um i can't imagine why he would want he would do that unless he truly really believed that to be the case 
in which case you'd have to ask him why do you believe that the, the using these substances can bring in entities that can sabotage your uh your conference gathering so uh i know it's a it's kind of a tough call but um it makes for a nice conversation to bring up anyway sure so yeah so any uh, uh anything regarding the mu styles of music like yeah yeah um well, uh, so when it comes to picking the music for Beardfest, um, that's, it's sort of like a collaborative playlist, um, you could say, that Zach, Sam, and I create. Um, and often we've done it with, uh, in collaboration with um, another person on our team, Justin Berger, who's, um, his role is called the talent buyer. So he... Um, he's often been the one to, um, once we decide what bands we want, he'll be the one to reach out to their booking agent and work it out and get them there um, and make a deal. Um, so but they, so we, we all have our own tastes, um, but there is sort of a beard fest aesthetic that we've cultivated over the years and that we do try to to, you know, we try to knock out a few, like we try to capture a certain essence in our lineup. And I, and I suppose what that would be is, um, it's partly jam band world music, like jam band scene music. So we'll have some bands that are from the jam scene, we would say. Um, we will have some bands from like, we would call maybe like new school jazz or jazz fusion or jazz funk world. So. Um, in that category, we're looking for world-class musicians who, you know, as as just uh, as just craftspeople of their instruments are, you know, as as proficient and amazing and incredible as you can possibly be, and that they they put that music in the context of something that's still uh, somewhat danceable. So so that's where you get that's where bands like Ghost Note come in. Ghost Note is a band full of world-class jazz musicians, people who are really top of the world on their instruments um, in terms of their technical ability, but they're playing funk music together. So it's this great combination of uh, it blows your mind and it moves your ass um, at the same time. So that's, that's th the easiest way to sum it up is we like music that blows your mind and moves your ass. Um, but then, you know, so that those are like for our headliners, our nighttime acts. That's kind of what we're going for. Um, but throughout the day, we like to experiment uh, with a wider variety of things. We always like to book a few um, local bands, just like to support the local scene. Um, and then we, we like to book a few acoustic artists to put early in the day because we, we sort of believe that like uh, it's not that fun getting woken up to a full band with a full drum kit. So we tend to start the day off with softer music. Um, so usually we'll start with an acoustic act and then we'll move to slightly louder, but still generally soft music. And throughout the day, there's sort of a crescendo. It builds throughout the day. Um, and uh, yeah, those are, those, are some, those are some things that go into curating our lineup. Thank you for uh, getting into that. And uh, at this point in the interview, folks, um, I would uh, like to kindly, from the bottom of my heart, ask that anybody who wishes to listen to this rest of this interview, please um, pay me on Patreon to be able to listen to the highly significant, important info that we will certainly discuss uh, in the rest of this interview. Whatever that may be, it'll just come to me. My angels and guides will guide me on this interview to make it the, the best it can be for the last um, uh, 20 minutes or so that I will be having him. So uh, please, folks, uh, pay me on Patreon if you would like to um, listen to that. Just want to get that out here so I know where to mark that on the interview when I upload it. So, uh, 